Hey, how are you? Pretty good. How's it going? Good. Can you hear us okay? I can't hear you guys well. I'm just getting myself situated here. Okay. We're going to give folks just a couple of minutes. We normally start right at 7. Just getting them a couple of minutes to come on in. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, anytime. You know, anything I, I can really do to help out, you know, always willing to do that. I'm a city kid myself, so any way I can add some value to the lives of the city kids, and I'm all in. Oh, yeah. See if the lighting went down, Isaiah. Is that on your phone? Can you swipe it up? You said, is that me? Oh. My life. No, that was us. Uh... So, yeah, we um kind of give them folks just a few minutes to come in. If they don't join right away, we'll typically save the live um, on our page. And you can access it from our page as well. And folks will come back and view it uh, later. Nope. Look, trust me, it don't, it don't make a difference. So just, <laughs> just having a conversation about finance with, with you know, YouTube is good enough. Um, How did you guys get into this, though? Like, cause this is a pretty good... This is a pretty awesome thing that you guys are doing. All right, I'm going to let Isaiah introduce it. Go ahead. Um, how did we get in there? Just give him my introduction. Um, oh, so Positive Role Models is um, it's a social enterprise under our parent company, LTI Concept. Um, our mission is to serve, inspire, and lead. And with that, we hope to build the capacity of future leaders, not only in the district, but um, eventually around the world. And we offer numerous, like, programs and like services through our current company, LTI Concept, like family therapy sessions, one-on-one -on -one therapy sessions, uh, the family standard operating agreement, and then also through positive role models, we sell apparel, and 10% of all of those proceeds are directly invested back into the youth. And so, yeah. uh, so I w I'm a licensed social worker in D.C., born and raised in Washington, D.C., okay. and I started my career in the social work field in 
Yeah, just to start it off, the first question was, could you tell us about the process of getting your MBA? The process of getting my MBA. So, funny enough, um, you know, again, it's, a, it's I'll try to give you guys a short version. But, uh, again, like many young boys growing up in the inner city, like I had hoop trainings, right? I mean, I was an athlete, played football and basketball growing up, focused more so on basketball once I got to high school, graduated from Cardoza you know, 13th mm. and uh, Clifton. Uh, grew up in the Columbia Heights neighborhood, later moved to Southeast area, uh, second half of my life, um, you know, right along 12th Street. So um, went, was fortunate enough to be on the team at Marshall, you know, yes. wind up leaving the team. So those NBA aspirations quickly, you know, vanished. Uh, came home, you know, got a job on Capitol Hill in the lobbying office, the best government you know, civics education I ever had was working on the Capitol Hill, uh, finding out how things really get done uh, behind closed doors, which is a, a topic for a whole nother day. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't have all the sport out of my system. So I wound up leaving that job, taking a role with a Catholic school, actually, um, in the Archdiocese of Washington. They had started this new school called Don Bosco Cristo Rey. Right. And, you know, I, they needed an athletic director. So I'm like, look, I was drunk on coaching. I was like, you know what? I get the job as the athletic director, make myself the coach. I got job security. So mm -hmm. I wind up I wind up doing that for about six years or so. And then realized like all of the big business stuff just wasn't out of my system. And at that point, you know, once you kind of get an education, you can easily like lock yourself in. It's hard to kind of get out. So the only way to pivot was to go back and, and get my MBA. So I went back and got my MBA mm -hmm. in finance and uh, use that to transition back into big business, where I ultimately took a role with Merrill Lynch, worked there for a number of years, and, and then decided, you know what? Like, these guys don't know more than what I know. Like, at the end of the day, markets are efficient. Um, no one has a crystal ball. You know, why am I paying these guys to – why am I giving up so much of my production when no one really knows tomorrow better than any one person? So I, I said, you know what? I'm gone on my own. Had enough mm -hmm. information to do my own thing, so I, I, that's what I did. Okay. I'm gonna take this out, see if that helps. We're trying to get our lighting right. Did that help right there? Oh yeah, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, you guys that's are good. better. Okay. Yeah, much better. Yep. I'll slide mine in closer too, actually. That's that's my phone. Man. Yeah. Why are your phone dark? I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't this okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that was that was pretty much it. So I went enrolled, uh in uh, online MBA program offered mm. through University of Delaware, uh, you know, go 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 Blue Hens. <laughs> Joe Biden actually is a graduate of, of University of Delaware, so we're we're on high horses right now. Um, so I did that, you know, for 16 months. Got my MBA, like I said, took a job with Merrill Lynch, and, uh, and here I am today, you know, owner of my own what we call a registered investment advisory firm. That's what's up. Uh, I did not know that you went to Cardoza. I went Somebody to in here said they went to Cardoza. Well, yeah. we call it Cardoza. Y'all, y'all call it Cardoza. Nah, Cardoza. We Cardoza. call it Cardoza. Other people on the outside, the haters call it Cadirty sometimes. What was your? What was your next question? Oh, um, so my second question was, what would you say are the three most reliable sources of income? The three most reliable sources of income. Mm -hmm. that's you know, that's one. an interesting question, and. Uh, Honestly, it's, it's no easy answer to that. I think we get comfortable thinking someone paying us is reliable. I'm, and, I'm sorry. My bad. Can I rephrase the question? Sure. Passive income. Passive incomes. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Um, I mean, obviously, real estate is a good one, oh, right? Man. I mean, you can't really beat real estate, for, you know, as it relates to passive income. Uh, in my world, stock dividends, like a lot of people don't make that play a lot, and particularly in our community. Like we, we think, you heard it before, like everyone loves real estate because it's tangible. You can touch it. But mm -hmm. shoot, I can take the same money, stick it in a, a bond fund, which is even safer than real estate, in my opinion, and yield the same amount of return, you know, 5% return on an annual basis, you know, probably even more than what I would get in real estate. So uh ah. you know so so real estate play uh a dividend fund uh play uh and then you know uh, muni bonds um it, and i don't know if you guys know what bonds are but essentially 
a bond is a, a loan that I would give to, let's say, a government entity, right? A, mm -hmm. a municipal bond. So DC's DC want to build a new stadium. They're issuing mm -hmm. five hundred million in municipal bonds. You know, I subscribe to a portion of it. Let's say I gave them five million just for argument's sake. Um, before that five million, they promised to give me my five million back in thirty years. But on top of that, they'll give me a stated percentage on an annual basis, five percent. So because you're talking about doing business with a state, I mean, the money, they have the tax authority to get the money back by raising taxes on all this constituents. It's super safe is, is what I'm saying, unless mm -hmm. right. there's a 2008 in Detroit, but that's a whole other conversation for a different day. Um, but essentially, I just gave my money, promised to get it back at a certain point in time. And I'm getting 5% annual every year on that money. I mean, simple math tells you if I had 3 million in, you know, three million, five percent of three million is is roughly about a hundred sixty, hundred seventy thousand. So every year, every year, I don't got to lift a finger. So if I had to go three, three good ones, it would be real estate, and this is in no order, but real estate, um, some type of um, some type of bond fund, which could be corporate bonds, um, Fannie Mae, you know, mortgage bonds, and then I would say, you know, m muni bonds for sure. Okay. Yeah. I, I tell people all the time, if I had $3 million right now, like you would never have to work again if you buy muni bonds. Guarantee money every year. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so I recently, this year, just really started getting um, into like stocks. Uh, really stocks. I've always been interested in, uh, in um, real estate. But what would you say somebody that's just coming, just starting their first job and starting to get money, where should they start kind of, um, where should they start with trying to build financial wealth? Because that's one of the things, one of our principles is financial literacy. Freedom. And freedom. Yeah, if someone was just getting started, I mean, honestly, if you're getting your first job, like, contribute to your 401k. Can you guys see me? Yeah, I can see you. Sorry, yeah, I'm just trying to straighten my lighting up a little bit here. I apologize. But I, I would say contribute to your 401k. I mean, at the end of the day, that's a 100% return on your investment, right? So uh -huh. normally, whatever that match is, if they're going to match you 3% of your salary, like, you definitely got to do that. Because now you're getting, a, for every dollar you put in, they're putting a dollar in. So you already got a 100% return if you think about it that way on top of whatever you're going to get from having it invested in the market. Um, so that, that, would be, that would be one way to start it. The second thing is we don't use life insurance in our community. So if you think about this, and I, mm -hmm. hate, to, I hate to say what I'm going to say, but um, how many young people we've lost mm -hmm. that are never going to earn any of their career earnings, any of their career earnings? Mm -hmm. That money's lost from your family forever mm -hmm. because we haven't properly insured our life earnings, right? So mm -hmm. when you're 18, that's as cheap, or well, let's say 22, you graduate college the whole nine, that's as cheap as life insurance is ever going to be for you. Mm -hmm. So don't get term for 20 bucks a month, like get a permanent insurance. So look at a, what we call the index universal life insurance policy or whole life policy or some type of permanent life insurance. Lock in that low rate, and then over time, what you'll find is that that becomes a good buck of money, a good bucket of money to pull from in the future. But if you never need it, you basically, and I work with a number of professional athletes, what I tell them is you basically secured the bag for your family. Mm -hmm. So if you put it in there, you know at some point in the future it's going to come back, either through the cash accumulation within a permanent policy or if you pass on, you know, Right. Yeah, I've heard a number of people recently. Uh, I, I always get so sad when I see um, people who, I'm just talking about the young people who lost their life to like gun violence. I'm just using gun violence in D.C. And then I see the um, GoFundMe and it's no judgment. It just it just makes me sad that there will be no generational wealth for their kids or their families or anything. So whole life insurance. I didn't know that. Erica had a question. Well, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, let me make. I'm not a big fan of whole life. Honestly, if you're okay. gonna do a permanent product, I really like index products. To be quite honest with you, 
And we can, again, we can talk about that when we have a whole lot more time. Um, but just having insurance, period. Um, and it's not even about the death benefit. It's just about, again, when you accumulate what they call cash credits, a cash value inside of an insurance policy, at some point you can pull that money away without it ever being taxed. Mm -hmm. Right? So now you're playing a different ball game. Um, if let's say you hit it big and you're a multi-million dollar person at some point in the future, well, now you can use that same money to pay your estate tax. That can assure that all the money that you have now transfer to your family without paying. People don't know, like this, the state of Maryland is one of the only states in the union that, that make you pay an inheritance tax if you inherit a certain amount of money. Right. Wow. So I think it's like 5.4% or something of that nature. So like that's, so someone's leaving you a million. And if you got to pay 5.4% of that, you ain't getting the whole million. But if you had, you had life insurance in place, now that's going to pay the taxes. You get to keep the whole million. So these are some of the things that you do. Oh, wow. Like when people think about me, they often think stocks, bonds, et cetera. But it's really about the planning piece, like understanding the financial world, that financial literacy, so you can structure a plan for yourself to, to win. That was my question. Is there a difference? I'm going to let you ask the next question. Is there a difference between a financial planner or, or your, your firm that does all of the comprehensive financial planning and stuff and a CPA? That might be an ignorant question. But no, it's not they, an ignorant question. Are they the same? It, it's, it's not the same, actually. Um, in the money world, you normally have four professionals that you work with. So you got your, um, you got your, your financial advisor, you got your CPA, you got your attorney, and then you normally have like an insurance guy that, you know, help you structure all your insurance deals. Now, normally that, that's what we call, those core services make up what we call your family office, mm -hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, all those people should be working in tandem to ensure that everything you want out of life is accomplished for you, right? So your estate plan, um, which, which your lawyer, you know, your financial advisors working all your investments and your financial plan. Your CPA is like crunching the numbers, looking at your, your cash flow statements, which is your, your, in, you know, your income statement, cash flow statement, your balance sheet, et cetera, looking at what ways can they use those assets to decrease your tax liability today and in the future whenever it transfers to somebody else. Uh, so we, we all work together. I like to think that the financial advisor plays quarterback on all of that. Okay. Uh, some P some CPAs want to play quarterback on that. It gets it's get it gets confusing because a lot of CPAs these days want to give financial advice. So mm -hmm. some of them go take license exams so that they can be a quote unquote financial advisor. Um, where some just want to stay in their lane and handle the tax part of it. Um, even even with us in my in my firm, we provide more of that family office structure. So we do do some, some tax guidance, uh, mm -hmm. but we do that in conjunction with either our client CPA or our own staff CPAs. Oh, good. Hmm. What is... What is a CPA? Oh, you don't know what a CPA is? Uh, no. C what is... C <laughs> CPA is a certified public accountant. Oh, okay. I know what an accountant is. You know what an accountant is? Yeah, I know what So as a black man, let me ask you a question again as a parent. And... Um, at, at, oh, somebody else. Let me ask them. Let them ask. Oh, okay. Um, Arika, he answered that already. He didn't ask that. Do you know that? How do you get started? I can't read it. One of the questions was, how do you get started into muni bonds? Yeah, so you can, um, normally on the state's website, they'll talk about projects that they're trying to launch, and you'll, they normally say they're going to they're gonna raise money, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, if you ever heard of an IPO, which is an initial public mm -hmm. offering, think of think of munis as an IPO for states where they're essentially it's a capital raise. They're trying to raise money for a project. And a lot of times it's listed on their website or you can just call, you know, a broker dealer, uh, you know, a guy like myself or a Merrill Lynch or Morgan Stanley, Charles Schwab, et cetera, um, to see what deals they what new dish, what new deals they have coming up or what um uh, what old deals on the table so there's a secondary market and a primary market the primary market is new deals the secondary market is deals that's already been done and let's say out got in that deal early on but now one out 
because I want to get access to my money for some reason, mm -hmm. and I can sell that on the secondary market. Uh, honestly, if you have a if you have a brokerage account, you can really go into um, your online environment and be able to participate. But you want to do that with, in my opinion, the, the uh, you know professional help. Yeah. As a black man, why do you think some um, young people or some young black men don't see what you see? Like you said, you work with professional athletes and you work with. Um, how come they don't see the money and the resources and stuff like you saw it? Well, you know, again, I'm a, I'm a city kid, so I don't pretend like most people, like, it ain't, I mean, it is what it is. Like, at the end of the day, a lot of guys, like, I'm, I'm different. Like, I'm still in the city. Mm -hmm. You know, you can catch me in every neighborhood, you know, from the best neighborhoods to, you know, some of the, the, the neighborhoods that people don't really think that's so great. I mean, on a daily basis, because at the end of the day, people, I just believe that people are people. And we all want the same thing, but it's just a matter of whether we know or not, right? Uh, if we don't know, we don't know. And the only thing that sometimes we know is what we see. Mm -hmm. And like I said in the beginning, you see the guy in your neighborhood, and you know what he does or, or she does or whomever. And honestly, how easy is it to do it? It's just really mm -hmm. an ax, right? Hey, let me, let me get on, and you're on. Yeah. But mm -hmm. in our world, a lot of times because – I mean, you know this too. Are right? you so busy as an adult? You just you trying to you know you trying to get to work, get back home, take care of your family, whatever it may be. A, a lot of us don't spend the time doing what we're doing right now, which is yeah, letting people know, hey, look, this is an avenue for you. Like I look like you, I come from the same neighborhood as you. Some of the same challenges you, you wouldn't believe. Some of the challenges I had to face growing up, uh, but we faced the same challenges and I still made it. So if I can do it. There was nothing special to me that, you know, more so than, than, than you. Like, I honestly tell kids all the time, like, look, I know you have better capabilities than me, so if I can do it, I know you can. Yeah. Uh, I just think, you know, having more conversations like this, just showing them, like, hey, look, it's achievable. You yeah. just got to know the right people to do it. And, and one of the – I was always bold enough to make a phone call. So when I was 14, I remember – was it 14? Uh, probably, probably 15, one of those years when Michael Jordan was the – um, working with the Wizards. I mean, I literally pick up the phone and call the office and oh, yeah, wanted yeah. want to speak to Mike. So, like, you got to go seek the information, too. So you got to understand, like, I don't know what I don't know, but who can I get a hold of that may know it and right. then let me talk to them so I can replicate it. Right. Because it is, it's easy to follow the roadmap. Someone else has already done it. So you know what? Frank said he, he was a financial advisor at Merrill Lynch. Now he started his own firm. I wonder how do I do that? How do I reach out to them? And in this, this day and age with the internet where you can just send somebody a DM, like there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing all of that. And there's more people out there that's willing to talk than, than, um, than, than we probably give credit if we just, yeah. if we just make the, you know, we just make the reach out. Okay. I can't read that. Uh, another question was as a teenager, not at 18, but younger than that, uh, what steps can we take to begin making money? To get, well, I'm sorry, what kind of money? To begin making money, just money in general. I just now mentioned, like, we're in the internet age. Like, I like I have a 14-year-old, you know, 12-year-old and a 9-year-old. I'm on them all the time. Like, there's no reason why. So let me, let me back up. I made a comment early on about, like, we get too comfortable thinking someone giving us a paycheck is safe money when it's yeah. not, right? Because mm -hmm. ultimately, you put in your whole life in somebody else's hand, and at any moment, they can pull the rug from underneath you, and then you, you know, you sulking in your misery like, dang, I can't believe they did that to me. Well, they're going to make a business decision at some point. And you got to realize that, like, this is, like, this is all business, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I try to encourage, like, most millionaires have seven streams of income. Mm -hmm. It isn't always seven businesses. It might be one business with seven different products, right? Mm -hmm. Microsoft don't sell one type of device. That's true. One type of service. Apple don't sell one device, one type of service. Like, there's a reason for that. Um, so in the internet age, I mean, think about some of the things you guys can do. Like, how do you create something like this and then monetize it? Yes. How do you, you, you write a book, you sell it on Amazon. Like, even if you only make 50 grand on it, that's 50 grand you wouldn't have made if you didn't do it, right? So we got to stop thinking every, and think about, I played a lot of sports. So every hit don't have to be a home run. 
sometimes you just gotta hit a single, get on base, yeah. right? Then get the second, then get the third, then get home. So, like I would just say, just just find something you love, do it, and find a way to monetize it, and then figure out what things complement that, and then try to monetize those those complementary things that that goes around that. So, if if it was just I mean, drop shipping is a big thing these days. Like, mm-hmm. you, you can literally not touch a product and get paid on it using, you know, Amazon or any, you know, Alibaba or whatever it may be. Yeah. So, a lot of kids, I think, get caught up in that YouTube run of, oh, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be a YouTube star. Like, mm-hmm. that's good and fine if you can be one of the few that, that do that. Um, but there's some real tangible things that can make you 25, 50 grand. And I would try to focus most of my attention on that while then speaking on a platform like YouTube to show YouTube to show other people and then building mm-hmm. your audience that way. Right. That's good information. All right, y'all. We only got five minutes. Um, and then I know Rick is going to be blowing my phone up to get off of here because of you donating the time. She had one more question. I'm going to plug up the charger. Uh, the question was... Hey, hey, one thing really quick before you ask that question. You had mentioned about being an African-American in this business, I think the math is like two, two to 3% of all financial advisors are black. Oh, wow. Really? So, and you got to split that between black women and black men. Uh, so it isn't easy being black in this business, right? When you're trying to, most of the wealth is with white people, right? right. And if you're trying to go to them, they already don't trust you, especially a black man from the inner city. So fighting that battle is a tough battle, but I, I think, it's it's well worth it once you get on the inside and you figure out how to really do it. Um, you can be really successful. Like honestly, there's a deal I'm working on right now that if I close the deal, is with a pretty big name running back in the NFL. I mean, this deal could potentially pay three hundred thousand on one deal. See, so like that. I mean, once you get in, you got to deal with some BS like you deal with it anywhere else. Um, but mm-hmm. you can really change the trajectory of your entire family by being by being in a business like this two to three percent that's a small percentage so 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 think about it this way too if you want to think about how tough it is two to three percent of us are in it when majority of the wealth that's being managed in our community are being managed by people that don't look like me right. or you so there's a lot of work to be done in this business and I think there's a lot of room for people that look like us to be involved and if anyone wants to know like like I'm my information is public so feel free to reach out anytime oh man we appreciate that ask the um and I'm 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 gonna follow up after they after he asked you this last question from her what books or resources can young adults purchase to learn about finance yeah so there's a book called the random walk uh, the Random Walk on Wall Street. Okay. I think that's a good book just to kind of start. Um, and it's not just about stocks and bonds, but it's just understanding finance in general. We just think about, we're, we're too emotional about money, and that's 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 where a lot of our problems start. Like, we got to rethink it. So money, and we all grew up, money isn't everything, you know, you know, devil, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. It, it's, it, it's something that we it, we don't have to worship it but we needed to live the lifestyle that we want, right? Mm-hmm. It don't have to be a $10 million lifestyle. It could be a $50,000 lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But we need the money to be able to live the lifestyle we want. So we got to think about how do we use this tool to get the things that we need and want? Um, a random walk down Wall Street you know, can prime your mind for uh, just for that. Okay. 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 We... I can't do that. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, one more question. How can we find out more to become a financial advisor? You know what? Give me a call. Shoot me an email. Frank.b.simpson at the simfirm.com. Give me a call. 301-539-9331. I mean, you guys have my information. Feel free to share it or, you know, put it in the comments uh, or I'll put it in the comments. But feel free to reach out to me. Anybody wants to learn more about getting into the business, I'll give them the roadmap. All right, Mr. Simpson, I want to thank you again personally for spending a couple of minutes with us. I find um, what you do 
to be of most importance, and that's just being a model um, for kids like Isaiah coming behind you, specifically black boys coming behind you and black girls coming behind you. So I'm so appreciative of you giving us a couple of minutes of your time and being a leader for us, for me too, Thank to you. see that things are possible. Um, and again, for just taking a moment to spend some time with us. We will be reaching out. We will, because <laughs> we plan when Corona is to bring um, some of you guys together so that they can see you guys in person, hopefully. So she'll reach out and get your schedule. When all yeah, and then there. look, I think there's some other things that, you know, Again, we, we kind of stayed at the bird's eye view on this one, but I think we can really get into the weeds and talk about, um, you know. They're requesting you for part two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's definitely some room for a lot more conversation because there's, there's a lot more that, that, you know, we can go into as it relates to finance and financial literacy. I mean, honestly, yeah. I, think, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's an important thing. And, uh, you know, any way, that, any way that I can be of help, you know, I'll say I'm here. So we got you. We got you. We're going to tie you in. Hey, look, got, that's a public statement. You know, we got, you guys need we to got them, y'all. We got them. So we heard them. We're going to tie them in. Um, thank you again for your time. Arika put his information, y'all. Frank B. Simpson at the sim firm .com. Um Isaiah also is going to post it. Yeah, I'm going to say it. I'm Save it. Post it. All that information will be in the description below. And stay tuned. We'll bring you more. I know y'all, they've been asking for financial literacy for forever. So yes. thank cool. you so much. Nope. Anytime. All right. We'll okay. catch up soon. All right. All right. Thank, All right. thank you. Yep. No worries. Thank you guys. Yep. Um, you got it. Oh, oh yeah. I did. For those of you still on here, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stop sleeping on it. What's our YouTube channel? Positive Role Models University. Hey, Renaya. Hey Jordan. Hey guys. Hey guys. Alright, we got. Alright, we got. Give me.